Hello everyone, hope we're doing well. Uh, welcome to the Hop Pole Position Podcast. I'm your host as ever, Adam Steele. Unfortunately, there is no co-host tonight. Uh, Liam cannot be with us this evening. Uh, we wish him all the best. He'll, he'll be back next week, I'm sure. And uh, yeah, so what I'm going to do this week is I'm going to run through the news and I'm going to take probably quite a few more uh, questions from the audience than I normally would. Seeing as though I'm on my own, we are broadcasting at a later time than usual, uh, uh, 9pm rather than 8pm, because I've had to uh, scoot back from uh, John Brown's studio. Uh, we spent the entire day uh, completely removing everything from all his rack setup and rerouting 32 ins and 32 outs of guitar amps, load boxes, uh, Helix, Axe Effects, all the lot. So, yes, uh, it's been a busy old day. I've uh, had to patch up quite a few little cuts and bruises because uh, we did some heavy lifting. But I'm here and we're good. So, let's roll the intro. Yes. Hope you're all well. I can see that the number of viewers is now slowly going up. Losing DNA particles to the black hole vacuum of Twitch. Yes, quite. Uh, we are on Twitch, by the way. If you want to watch this stream and other the mixing streams that we do on Twitch, that would be twitch.tv slash hoppole studios. I've just got myself together a very heavily cherried um old fashioned. Cheers. Oof. That's strong. That's good. I've just managed to stuff a pack of Oreos in my face before we uh, before we go live. So yes, hello everybody. I can see you all filing in in chat. Hope you are all well. Good stuff. The number of viewers is now flying up. Yeah, it's never fun having to do things um, you know out of their regular time schedule. Uh, but hello everybody. Welcome, welcome. Yeah, it's all coming together now. And yeah, like I said, um, I, I've been at John Brown's place all day. And tomorrow we start filming a series for him and Riff Hard talking about the programming and routing and setup of uh, a fairly large studio style setup using an Antelope Orion, which is a pretty cool interface, I've got to say. Yes. So it's been it's been a hell of a day. We've had ups and downs, thrills and spills, backing up all those old hard drives as well, which has been adding things to the, uh, adding problems to the mix. But it's coming together. And that's what counts. Yes, looks like everybody's filing in. So yes, um, tonight, seeing as though Liam cannot be with us, uh, if you've got any questions at any point during the podcast, do just uh, stick them in the chat. And I'll probably get to them sooner rather than later, rather than it being at the end. So, so I got to undo it today. Yeah, I got a, basically I <laughs> have replanned his studio a little bit, uh, which means that I've got it so that there's a reamp box on one side of the studio, a different reamp box on the other side of the studio. Uh, the there's a Line Six pod, a Helix, and an Axe Effects on the left side. There's nine valve amps and a a Synergy rack. On the right side, there's the two notes, Captor X, Cab M, all his pedals are all set up, ready to go on a board from Marcus Deluxe. Yeah, I can't wait to show you some of the uh, the pictures that will come out of it, but it was, uh, it was a real mess sorting all that out today, because of course it was. He's just got himself a set of Amphions as well, which are incredibly expensive, and they sound very good. Uh, but yeah, oh boy, uh, the technical setup is uh, a doozy because also all of that is also routed through to a Blackmagic uh, switcher so that we can do eight cameras for live broadcast. Mm. Oh yeah, the, I enjoy making the mess while we do it. But af afterwards, I mean, 
the practicality is there. I really want one of the Ampeat amp switches because he's got one amp switcher right now, which has got eight uh, amp inputs and eight cab outputs. So he's only using four cab outputs. We've got, there's, uh, there's a coffee cabs cab. There's the box of doom, which is like a, uh, what do you call it? It's a an isolation box with a microphone in it. There's the Boss Wazer Amp Expander, and there's the Captor X currently. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> get to have a larger cranium. Yes, I have. I have expanded my uh, myself out a little here. In fact, I'm going to do a little more, so you can see the microphone. And there we go. That's a nice view, isn't it? Wide screen, everybody. Hi. Yeah, um, so that's throwing me off. Mm. And so this switcher has eight outputs that, that are line level, that go guitar level, that go to all the amps, and eight speaker returns, and then eight cabinet selections. And it's, it's kind of crazy. So then there's also a remote uh, control that sits on the desk. So you can just go click, 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 click. Henning's got one as well. Um... Have I used uh, an AMS Neve Legend desk? I've not. I've used the Neve VR, I think it was an 88, and it was a huge pain. Um, how's the Zilla wall of sound? Um, still doesn't have speakers in it yet. Um, hello, Scott. Uh, hello, everybody. So, yeah, I'm drinking an old-fashioned, but I don't have any oranges, so I've just put several cherries in it. Mmm. But yes, um, the Zilla Wall of Sound will get bigger at some point soon as well, I am sure. Um, there we go. So, yeah, um, there's a 6x12 cabinet coming at some point soon, but that's not arrived yet. Uh, when it does, I'll have a, um, a matching 1x12, 10 and 15. Uh, I'll have the the uh, the 2x12 base 2 by 10, 4 by 12, a different 4 by 12 and a 6 by 12 and a tiny little 1 by 10, which is about 11 inches by 11 inches, which is barely bigger. Yeah. Ooh, yeah, Daniel single barrel. That would definitely be a waste in one of these. Mmm. Oh, tasty. Oh, yes. Someone weird just started following me. Huh. Yeah, anyway. Um Sam, would you be free for a meeting anytime soon? Come and have a look around the studio. Uh that's a flat no at the moment. Um we're not letting anybody into the studio full stop. Um we we haven't had any people in the studio for months and we don't plan to until at least the new year. Uh because of obvious reasons like a global pandemic. Uh, so, yes. Mm. But yeah, sorry about that. Um, no, we're not letting people in at the moment. And I've not had a day free or even an hour free in weeks. I'm so backed up with work now, it's getting silly. So, yeah. Um, don't really have time for just talking with people, unfortunately. <laughs> And there are far more qualified people to talk to about soundproofing than me. So, yes. Um, anyway, let's talk about the news. Okay, so Archoria, the V Collection 8 has now been released. Uh, time has gone so fast over the last couple of weeks. I am intending to make several videos about the new stuff in the V Collection 8 because I now have... Uh, a copy of that. There are some funky new uh, selections in here. Uh, there's now the, uh, the the Roland Juno is in there. Uh, the classic Oberheim, which I've been playing with recently, is already there, but that was released a few weeks ago. Uh, the Emu Emulator 2 is available as well. That's a pretty cool synth. It's kind of like the Fairlight, but not quite. Uh, yeah, so it's very different to the Fairlight. Yeah, um, there's a vocoder, 16 band vocoder, so we can get back to doing the meow, meow, meow kind of stuff. And yeah, the uh, the Jupiter and the 
Stage 73, so the uh, Fender Roads have been redone as well, which I am very much looking forward to uh, to playing with because I do like the uh, the Stage 73 and the Jupiter. They, they've got some classic sound. So that's now out. It's €599, Euros, which is more than before, but it does have more software than before. And of course, if you don't need it right, right now, you could always wait till the next sale, which will probably be, you know, this time next year. But in the meantime, it's very good. Mm. So, uh, Waves Abbey Road uh, again. We've got the RS-124, basically the Altec tube compressor. So, yeah, that's interesting uh all tech stuff is usually known as like they've got nicknames like the radiator because they sound incredibly warm all to all tech stuff and um, quite often very high output on all tech stuff but it's 1958 compressors so yeah uh there is now one from waves apparently there was one from soft tube before uh so that's the real one. Ooh. And um, mm. one one's got faster attack and release times and the other one has uh, more tame ones. Huh, interesting. Apparently you can match them for parallel compression. Sounds pretty cool. Uh $40 at the moment. Regular price which you'll probably never buy it at $200 because it'll be on sale all the time knowing waves. And talking about waves, uh, we talked a couple of weeks back about the CLA Chris Lord Algae uh, kind of reverb plugin, and now there is an extended version that was released on Black Friday. And so this is what it looks like is a Lexicon uh, 480 to me, but with more features in it. There are four delay and reverb modules, which makes this very complicated uh which isn't always what i'm looking for in reverbs and delays uh, although yes you'll see me on stream dive in and really tweak some fine stuff generally speaking i find a sign that sound that i like with a reverb or a delay and i just kind of stick with it and then i'll use a separate um plug to then eq that i'll compress it because then that kind of it's a mental separation for me but yeah, it does look kind of cool, and it's got Mr. Chris right there. Uh, it is $30, though, which is kind of tempting, but I'm again, trying to get away again from using Wave stuff because I'm starting to get drawn in again. And They do that thing where they update the software, and then you have to pay because, because Waves, and that's not ideal. So, KHDK, or KDK. Electronics uh, launches Sergeant D, which is the uh, Scottian of Anthrax boost and uh, preamp. Brutal. Of course, Scottian from Anthrax uh, knows his heavy metal tones. And so this, yeah, it's got treble and boost, uh, treble and bass on the boost, which is good because that means, as you can see, the bass has been wound right down because that will then very much tighten up the response of most valve amps, uh, which is always useful. And yeah, looks pretty cool. But then a boost and preamp pedal uh, is, yeah. Apparently um, the sergeant on the front has been quoted as saying, if I see you flipping this on eBay, I'll stab you in the liver. Very brutal. So yeah, I... Hmm... Uh, Oh, hello. Ah, uh, yes, Mr. Brown has put up a photo of uh, what we were doing today, which I'll uh, see if I can do a screen capture later on so you can see that, because I've got now uh, a program called NDI Capture, so you can see what's on my phone screen, uh, which is really good for showing you things like iOS apps, like remote control apps and such. Um, right. Which I've used in a couple of the upcoming videos. Mm. So, uh, moving on. Red Witch conjures up the Pristina. So this sounds kind of nice to me. Um, I don't think there are... Oh, there's two controls on the top. But the Pristina is two 
different sounding germanium transistor powered boosts, uh, which apparently make things sound kind of clean and chimey. So there's two pedals and you get kind of more but clean, more but really clean, and then you can run them both. And there's a dual coloured LED on the so that's a very clean look to it, which I, I really like. And it's $299 though, and that's a lot of money. But hopefully they sound kind of nice. Apple are apparently readying 32 core ARM chips uh, for about a year from now, which tracks. I mean, the, the really low power mobile stuff that they've done is already eight core processors. Um, it would make a lot of sense for them to do 16 or 32 core. And from what the tech reviewers have been saying recently in the last couple of weeks with really kind of tearing down the architecture of the new ARM stuff, which is very relevant for us music producers, um, apparently they're much better with what's called out-of-order execution, which means that if you kind of, if the process is working on something and it needs to slip something else in, um, so, so I already had some work queued up and it needs to slip some other stuff in there, it doesn't cause the big panic that it does on the Intel chips, which is really good for, yeah, audio guys because we need everything to be really really like now 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 so that we don't have latency problems and if the system suddenly needs to do something else on an intel system it kind of stops and panics and freaks out and has to almost kind of reset itself to be able to do those other things whereas these new apple chips apparently are very good at just going yeah okay let's get this done then back to this very very good uh, so if it's uh, if it's designed like that from the ground up, then this 16 or even 32 core processor could be very, very good. <coughs> Excuse me. Very, very good for audio production. So I'm kind of excited to see how they turn out. Now, Ernie Ball, Mr. Ernie, well, Sterling Ball now and his uh, good ship family have uh, made more family reserve guitars, which are very, very pretty. Uh, so they're sparkle colored. And these um, are kind of cool. Uh, I don't know if anybody saw, but uh, John Petrucci put out an Instagram photo uh, this week of him at home in his home studio. And you could very clearly in the foreground see a headstock that was an Ernie Ball headstock uh, with eight strings eight tuning heads so it looks like dream theater because he was saying that he was tracking new dream theater album material which is to be expected everybody's locked down at home and it's almost kind of time for them to do that anyway because they do it on a, a touring cycle uh then yeah there could be some like bow, 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 bow stuff on the new dream theater album that could be cool mm. but yeah i i digress bali blue burst i like this color it's still got the kind of the spade of doom. But yeah, I do like the uh, the baked maple fingerboard on here offsetting the blue. It gives it a very much a kind of a beach feel. I like that. Um, yeah, each guitar in this run is hand signed by Mr. Petrucci. And yeah, they look really nice. Oh. Axis Semi Hollow Buttery Blonde. I don't like where the pickup is on this one. The pickup is not quite at the neck, but it's not near the bridge either. It's kind of in the middle. A single humbucker if you're listening to this on, on the podcast audio version. And it's got an, a big M instead of an F hole. So, yeah, that's really weird. Apparently they're only doing a run of 30 of these which kind of makes sense because it's going to be really odd. This is going to be a real jazz player's guitar, I think. Because, yeah. Mm. It, yeah, having that neck pickup seems to make more sense for all the kind of cleaner jazz players, if you know what I mean, that do the the Charlie Parker-y kind of thing that, I don't know, doesn't doesn't sit in my playing vocabulary shall we say all right stingray special this looks like it kind of follows on from the 
the Joe Dart from Wolfpack signature that came out fairly recently. Oh, that neck's very nice. It's flame baked maple neck. That's dark and yeah. So this has got one of their uh, neodymium humbuckers. So this is going to be really uh, what's the word? Uh, really aggressive and loud sounding because neodymium magnets have a very strong magnetic pull, which means they result in a very tight, uh, loud sound. Hmm. Mm. Oh, Stingray Special in Kinetic Blue. This is really pretty. I wonder if that's affordable. I mean, it's probably not. But uh, that's a really funky colour, I think, without the pit guard. Um, I could see myself playing one of those. Although, with any single pickup, Music Man, I always have an issue uh, because I play fingerstyle and quite often I will hook my thumb for an anchor on the neck pickup. If I'm playing on the lowest string, my thumb needs somewhere to go so I'm not just kind of flapping and clapping in the wind. <coughs> and so if I'm not looking, then that marker physically is, yeah, that little ridge on the neck pickup. It's why I have trouble playing things like Rickenbackers because the, even though they have a neck pickup, they don't have a defined little step there for me to put my thumb on. And that means that, uh, yeah, I can, I can play them and I learn on an, one of those, but it's just slightly odd and a little uncomfortable for me to be uh, doing naturally. Mm. But yeah, that's an interesting little lineup that we've got there for the uh, the family reserve. Oh yeah, there's no way I'm going to be able to afford it actually if it's a family reserve model. Yeah, because that's thousands. Mmm. So, uh, here's an interesting news article. Um, Flip. It's a sampler app by Andrew Huang. Anyone who doesn't know who Andrew Huang is, um, look on YouTube to search Andrew Huang, H-U-A-N-G. He's really, really good. Uh, he's an excellent musician, uh, makes a lot of fun stuff, very multi-talented and very techy. And he has actually made music that's of, that is publicly usable in the YouTube library, which I've used in some of my videos. So cheers to you, Andrew Huang. And yet he's now made his own program called Flip. It's a nine channel sampler, sequencer and performance tool. So for people who are looking at trying to do performances solely with a phone, this looks really cool. You can step sequence different patterns. Looks like you can lock in certain parameters or you can play with filters, add reverb, play with pitches. And yeah. So it looks like he's tried loads of different mobile apps and they're either complicated and unwieldy or too simple with too specific a use case, which makes a lot of sense to me. So yeah, everything revolves around your nine samples. More often than not, a three by three grid of pads. Makes sense. Is he on Twitch? <laughs> I don't know, actually. Um, I don't know if Andrew Huang does any live production videos but the stuff he releases is very cool oh ableton link integration stem export and project sharing yeah that's some deep cleverness they've thought about this a lot yeah um it's nine dollars 99 comes with eight t samples and five demo projects that's really clever and there are already uh, other artists who've produced sample packs for it which makes sense. Uh, it's available now from the App Store. So if you're interested, check that out. If I had any time, I think I would check that out and make a video on that. Right now, I'm still trying to dig myself out of all the videos that I've got. And I've even got more coming in. It's getting crazy. Anyway, um, satellite amplifiers uh, gives up as Gibson takes back the coronet. So Epiphone's coronet and now Gibson owning Epiphone and having done so forever. Um, have got all upset with uh, satellite amplifiers who are making a coronet amp. 
So, yeah, I was quite hoping that satellite amplifiers would win this one. But it seems that uh, Gibson did the typical American thing of throwing money at lawyers until satellite amplifiers couldn't reply with doing the same thing. Satellite amplifiers has a federal trademark, uh, which means it was allowed to build its own version of the Gibson-owned coronet design. Originally built by Epiphone in the 50s. And yeah, that was uh, interesting. Yeah, so, hmm. Of course, there's a picture of uh, Mark from Mark Agnesi from Gibson wearing one of them because, of course, he is <laughs> typical. But yes, um, I don't know. I mean, using the name Coronet does seem a little cheeky. Making something in the same design, I think, is doable. I don't see many people playing these type of guitars these days, apart from, you know, you slightly out there indie guys who are trying specifically to be a bit edgy and a bit alternative, if you know what I mean. It's, uh, yeah, there are a lot of people there who want to be different, and good on them, do it, is what I say, but don't be, uh, don't be upset when people see what you're doing and point it out. <laughs> All right, so um, this one's a little older, but because we didn't do a podcast last week, I was really not well um, this time last week, which uh, thank you for understanding, everybody. Um, funnily enough, whatever had happened to me, I was incredibly run down. The next day, I felt good again. Whatever it was, um, I think it was either just exhaustion or a common cold, or maybe a combination of the two, but I was just dead. But then I got an early night, and I was fine. So, yes, thank you, everybody. A, a lot of people uh, wished me well, which is always very much appreciated. And, yeah, everybody's well wishes combined and <coughs> made me restored to health in the morning, which is great. So, uh, Boss have surprised and upset a lot of people. <laughs> Their new Wazza Craft pedal Everyone was hoping, I say everyone, a lot of people were hoping would be a reissue of their fuzz pedal, the FZ2, because they saw kind of uh, this in the corner. If we just kind of, that bit at the top there where you see just the fuzzy uh, uh, metallic finish. But it turns out, no, it's a tone bender. And they've specifically used the tone bender name uh, because this is a collaboration with Solar Sound, who own that uh, trademark name. And the funny thing is, I mean, this is going to be an expensive pedal, largely speaking. I mean, for what it is, it, it's a Wazacraft pedal. They're like 200 or plus dollars per pedal. And if I remember rightly, a tone bender is about five or six little pieces in there. Um tone benders and like vintage fuzzes and that kind of thing are relatively easy circuits to make and yet you can probably get some crazy boss pedal like the terra echo or something like that for a lot less money despite the fact that inside it the circuit is way simpler uh, which is a little bit mad to me but rare germanium transistors so there you go i guess uh, yeah, it does make sense that parts are hard to find for a germanium fuzz because the, the parts haven't been made in many, many years. But I'm wondering why people like Boss don't commission factories to remake that part. And I know that would cost money, but would it cost more money than trying to source new old stock? <sighs> I don't know. But yeah, finally... Uh, the Cornef Audio Amplified Instrument Process adds mojo to guitars and more. I am looking forward to playing with this particular plugin. I don't have a copy yet. I'm hoping to get one from Dan Cornef. <clears throat> but my good friend John Brown already has this plugin and it's going to be part of the new uh the new setup that we're we're making for his whole thing. And 
yeah, it looks really cool. It's got kind of like a a preamp sound in there, but it's also got everything that you would need in a channel strip, especially for guitars. It's got a thing called the insufferable mid-range filter. So it's already got in here uh, a notch remover because if ever you've recorded really heavy guitars, the first thing you notice in almost any heavy guitar is a whistle. Um, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where it is, depending on what microphones you've chosen, uh, the cabinet, the the guitar tone. There's almost always a whistle, and the fact that this already has that taken care of, I find really clever. There's also a four band, very vintage style EQ on here. There's a compressor designed specifically for like, rhythm guitars, which I like. Um. So I'm yeah very much looking forward to uh, playing around with it. There's also yeah frequency dependent gain reduction, uh, which is what I call the wub wub reducer. So uh, some of the guitar tones that we got today, especially with the uh, the two notes cab M, which again wearing a two notes T-shirt as as I often do, um, and the two notes cab M. Uh, with the Synergy preamps were given as a proper gutsy chug 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 low end on some stuff, which was really cool. But left in the mix would dominate uh, the mix in a very negative way. Uh, whereas, yeah, using this frequency dependent gain reduction thing, which is kind of an extension of uh, an Andy Sneap trick... Uh, which was to use a multi-band compressor and only use a single lower band to kind of tame the chug chug chugs on the lower end of the guitar. Why have four bands on a multi-band compressor and have three of them not used? When you can design this, very clever and yeah, well done, Dan Corneff. Stereo widening as well, which if anyone tries to use that stereo widening, I will uh, stop them. Because uh, yeah, not good. But yeah, uh, it's currently out for $99.99 and for everything it does, this sounds well worth the money. Um, I'll be trying it very soon and I'll be able to report back uh, to see how cool it is. Mmm. Ah, tasty, tasty alcohol. But that was this week's news. So... Yeah, the, the John Petrucci thing happened. I'm trying to think what else has happened in the last couple of weeks. Uh, let's just see. NDI source. Uh, NDI. Let's just see if I can bring up my screen for you. Because if I can do that, we can do some very cool things. Like I can show you uh, exactly what I've been doing. Um, come on brain, that's now working, uh, that can be Adam's iPhone display, so if I just do that, lovely, I'll move that into position, and you'll be able to see a couple of things on my phone. Let's close Pornhub first. Yes, very good, Al, very good. <clears throat> so, uh, what was I going to do? Um, that's, that's throwing me off a little bit now. I was gonna, What was I going to show you? Um, let's have a look on uh, me photos. Oh yeah, so that's, that was the first thing, was that this was... Uh, this was the rack that we did today. So you'll be able to see from the bottom on the right that's the Axe Effect 3. It's the pod, a 500 series rack with some neat prints and a rim. Uh, two neat prints from Stam and then an Audio SP 80. Uh, there we go. And then the Antelope, uh, Orion, and Sabori. And then over there, we've got the uh, Five Technics 26, which I'm not a big fan of, but it's there. Uh, then, audio is just three. Uh, wonder why. Uh, there's no the 
shouldn't be any audio on that. A really good trim low. And just uh, restart our engines, but you can see if that helps. Hmm. Well, here's a question. If I turn that off, has that fixed anything? Let me know if that's fixed the audio, because that shouldn't do anything. Hmm. Bizarre. It's better off? Okay, well, that's, that shouldn't be the case. Because it's on all the time. I'm just hiding and showing the video. So that's weird. Oh, I did actually just mute the NDI source. So hopefully that's fixed that. All right. But you can also see your, uh, that's weird. It shouldn't be causing anything to stop the I guess uh, that could uh, cause any issues. Uh, all right. Weird. But yeah, that that's particularly strange then. Huh. Uh, let's see. Uh, latency mode is normal. Allow hard hardware acceleration. Let's just see what this does. Hmm. Weird. Okay. Anywho, uh, wireless connection over the same. Well, that that's the only thing I've got on the wireless right now because uh, my laptop is hardwired in. But yeah, that is strange. That shouldn't be doing that. Okay. Ah well, there were other things I was going to show you, but I guess not. Any questions from the chat? Um, yeah, odd indeed, Danny. Uh, I wonder if I can just upload a few photos to Dropbox and, uh, that, there we go. And then I can just see the photos on here and, uh, be able to display them without any kind of audio stuttering issues. How's the old sketchy Marshall? Yes. Well, that's the other thing I was going to mention. That was the other highlight of my week, um, is that I now own a classic Marshall through the most bizarre of circumstances. Um, so there it is. Let's just see if I can add an image. I know I can add an image. Yes, um, Mega Mod Marshall. Yeah, that's the one. Um, so let's just bring this in. There we go. Oop, that's a bit big. Gee whiz. OBS can be a real pain sometimes. But yes, this is uh, my new Marshall JMP. And it's from 1978, and it's a modified 100 watt Marshall Super Lead, essentially a JCM 800, an early one. And it's awesome, and it cost me a lot less than it should. I went to buy it from a guy who used to play keyboards, and he thought it was uh, basically garbage and was going to throw it away. Yeah, seriously, this guy was going to throw this away because he thought it wasn't worth anything. And then one of his friends convinced him to sell it. And so I bought it for a lot less than they uh, should go for. But yeah, um, a usual Marshall JMP, they're kind of a classic rock amp, even at full preamp and full volume. They're loud, but they're not particularly high gain, which is what 
this knob on the right hand side of the two input jacks is all about uh, because someone let's make it bigger so you can see that knob there someone has modified this to have extra gain so it's a modded marshall so yeah that mod means it literally goes to 11 it actually goes to about 20 in terms of the gain <laughs> Uh, because that is uh, some probably sort of cathode follower with an extra gain stage in between V1 and the rest of the amp. Um, I have recently soft modded my little JCM800 studio that I have under my desk here with the um, Legendary Tones Lynch mod. And the reason that I bought this JMP, um, I saw it on the Facebook Marketplace, is I was going to put the Lynch mod in it and so yeah yeah i was i was going to uh to kind of soft mod it anyway and then when i went to buy it i saw that knob and was like wait what hi right okay and so it was one of those where it was a nice old chap smile and nod listen to his stories give him the the money run as fast as you can Did that someone live in that famous LA street? I mean, I, I don't know what you're talking about. Do you mean Dave Friedman? Do you mean Jose Arredondo? I don't know. Um, I don't know who did this mod. I have not opened the amp yet. I went to get it at the start of this week. Um, the keyboard player had it on and was playing a keyboard through it with the gain really low and it sounding really clean. And so we turned it off and I took it and ran, put it in the studio, have not touched it. Yeah, so I don't know who's done this mod. I'm going to make the assumption that someone in the UK has modded this, possibly copying a Jose mod. Don't know. Uh, but I'm going to be taking it uh, to my amp tech uh, a man called roland lumby from the amp clinic who works on amps for people like brian may and johnny marr and yeah the well-known guys and i'm gonna ask him politely to uh not take out the mod but just document what it is and what it does so that i know and make sure that the whole thing is safe apparently it blew a valve uh a year ago and the guy just put a new fuse in and put a new valve in so something deeper may need fixing. So I don't really want to use it a lot until after the new year because that's the soonest I can book this in for a service. Uh, but yeah, that is going to be really cool. And so... Uh, Scott from Chernobyl Studios says, uh, am I still sending him uh, his big pile of medical documents? Yes, they're on the way. No, he asked me if I was sending him uh, the JCM 2000. I mean, I couldn't even if I wanted to. That belongs to my dad. So let's open this up instead. This is the other image from this week. These are all the speakers that I have collected. How ridiculous is that? Um, that is all the speakers bar one that I'll be using in this new Celestian speaker shootout video. And the one that's missing is the 15 inch fullback, which is currently my other Zilla 1x15 fat baby. And it's gonna need, no, it's in the, yeah, it's in the 1x15 fat boy, and it's gonna have to go in the 1x15 fat baby. <laughs> Scott says he showed his wife the angle fireball for a grand and she just eye rolled, yes. <laughs> so yeah this is every speaker that celestian currently make for guitar apart from the signature ones so the george lynch which i don't think they make and the evh uh and the heritage models uh because i wanted to not touch the the crazy heritage thing because when you get into recreating like 60s speakers you then start to talk about comparing them to the actual 60s speakers and 70s speakers and other people do that. How have I ever used and tried warehouse speakers? Yes, I have. They're okay. 
I'm a fan of Celestian. Hello, Chris, in chat. I hope you're all right, mate. Uh, yes, so... Uh, two Notes is getting an updated Celestian IR. Um, not from me. <laughs> um, Celestian do their own cabinet captures, so um, that's not me. I'm not an under any ND, any ND, any NDA or anything. I just don't do them for them. They have their own thing. Uh, but yes, I have, including the 15-inch speaker, and that one down in the Zilla cab at the front is the Neo 250 Copperback. 25 speakers to compare. And so, yes. What do I think of the new dark glass pedal? Oh yeah, I don't know why that wasn't a news article this week. <laughs> Looks kind of cool. It's called the Adam, which is uh, a little weird for me. Uh, but that is the Nolly Get Good um, uh, new signature pedal. Sounds good. Sounds like him. I don't want one because it's a very signature sound. And I like to make my own signature sound. So, yeah, sounds great. <laughs> But if you want to sound like Periphery with all that bass, clear, clank, get one of them. Um, I like sounds that are kind of like that, but but not exactly like that. Yes, it is really funny that someone who's that deep into... Uh... <laughs> no co-host tonight. Yeah, that's right. Liam's not with us tonight. He's... Uh... He is away this week. So, yes, he'll be back. And in greater numbers. Uh, I'm just gonna, that just, what, why was I taking pictures of a tripod earlier? What was I doing? Uh, yeah, I don't know why I did that. Oh, Scott, I swear, when are we getting hammered together on stream? Yeah, we'll do a Christmas stream. We'll do a Christmas stream where we have some alcohol and we drink and talk rubbish at each other because that's what we'll do be a lot of fun oh the other thing that arrived this week apparently i had a missed delivery today and i um actually didn't know what it was because i can't remember ordering anything recently but i don't know um the other thing that turned up and i'll let this load uh is these so these are Fun fun fact, I run a recording studio and I only have two SM57s. Not the biggest fan of them, I use them on guitar cabs and not a great deal else. Um, uh, but uh, recently I've had issues with both. Uh, a couple of years back I took the transformer out of this bottom one and the top one has just been a bit dicky recently so up at the top right here you'll see a pair of replacement transformers uh from a company called ami so it's the the tab funk and work guys i think um but yeah um the main guy from them has passed on and is no longer with us but luckily ami are still making these so i'm gonna make a video about how an sm57 sounds with and without the transformer then replace them both because i need to do that so yeah that's the other thing that i've done this week and so yeah most of what i've done this week is <clears throat> either working with john john brown looking after my daughter because uh, her nursery's been closed, but it's now open again. <clears throat> and editing videos. So I've got an unboxing video for November that goes out tomorrow. Um, I need to make the thumbnail for that. <clears throat> I've just finished editing the December unboxing video because I've just got an Archuria Key Lab 88, which is very nice. And, and also I talk about the Tower of uh, Zillas, the wall of sound there. <clears throat> and... Yeah, family's good. Everybody's good. Um, we're all just kind of counting down the grinding work days until Christmas now, which is going to be a nice little bit of well-earned time off. And yeah, so the Patreon Q&A is in my edit list, so hopefully I'll get to that tomorrow night. Um, 
yeah, then it's on to editing videos for the Adam S2V speakers. Uh, the Audience Evo 8 needs to go out. Uh, the... I'll pull up the list, actually. Because I can't remember for the life of me now. Uh, uploads. Uh, Austrian Audio's OC818 video needs to go out. Um, I need to release a video for the Lewitt uh, 640 Rex. Uh, sure MV7. <laughs> Those are just the ones I can think of off the top of my head. Uh, I started making a video for the Houston Kenner Black Spirit 200, but that never got finished. Uh, hopefully that's all of them for now, but it's going to be an uh, editing extravaganza this week. <clears throat> No hurry for you on the Evo 8 vid video, I'm sure, but um, Audient have been emailing me saying, hey, I hope you're doing well. Where's the video? So, yeah, it's it's all a big backlog that's kind of catching up to me because of um, Ivy being out of nursery for the last few weeks. But hopefully, I mean, the other thing is I'm in every day this week filming with John uh, and I've got other work to do for him which is fine, but it just, after that, it's going to be like, right, edit, 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 yep, 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 rubber, rubber, edit, edit, edit. <laughs> and then I need to start organizing that Celestian speaker video because I have 25 speakers to demo and I'll be getting five guitarists. Uh, I need to get all of their playthroughs and videos in. Then I need to run the audio through each one of those and i'll be using a fender twin for the cleans uh, i think i'm using a fender twin with a tube screamer for the bluesy stuff uh i'm going to be using either this jcm 800 studio or the marshall jmp for jack gardner's stuff uh, i'll be using which whatever one i use i'll be using the other marshall for the jamie humphreys crunchy stuff i'll be using the rev generator mark three for the uh, john brown segment and I think, I think I'm going to be using a 5150 Mark I for the heavy, heavy stuff. And at the moment, it looks like it's going to be me that's doing the drug, 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 drug stuff. So <clears throat> that's at the moment, because I did ask uh, Carl from Nile if he would do it. And he is more than indisposed at the moment, which is fair. He's in the middle of mixing an album. Uh, we are reaching out to other guitarists right now to see if anybody's got a little bit... Yes, so I did get Jack Gardner um, involved, and he said yes. And then, yeah, I'm trying to get a heavy, heavy guitarist involved, but if not, I can cover that bass. So that's not the end of the world. But it'd be really nice to get an extra well-known guitarist in there. <clears throat> but it means there are going to be at least, at least, 125 different uh, reamps <laughs> just for that one video so yeah that's gonna be a big one like we're talking two or three hours long that video but it's gonna be hopefully one of those videos where people talk about it for a long time so yeah is what it is uh, a lot of work to make something that people remember so yeah Mm. Oh, oh, that drink's getting stronger. I can taste the cherries. Why does Restream say I'm offline? Oh, Restream's just being weird, is it? That's fine. But yes, um, I think that is a good time to call this solo podcast, and you'll see me very soon. Oh, um, I changed the Mischwald uh, master very, very slightly. They loved it. And uh, so, actually, am I all right? Yeah, what's up? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm good. I just got kind of a little bit tunnel visioned with the thought then. <laughs> but yeah, um, yes. Hello, Harmony Smurf in chat. But yes, uh, the, the Mischfeld stuff is is great. They are going to 
track more songs. It went that well now with their album that they're actually adding more songs to it. So, oh, there was a streaming issue, was there? Weird. Okay. Bizarre. Uh, but yes, um, and also I'm, I'm getting some frame lag from this cheap capture card. I might replace that with an Elgato one now. I believe they are back in stock and you can actually buy one. So that's good. Um, but yeah, I've also made the decision that the mixing desk in my studio is going bye-bye at some point. That's been something we've been talking about for a long time. But yeah, I'm actually going to put some nice custom racks in there to put outboard in so that over the next couple of years maybe i can start filling that up with shiny shiny outboard so yes i think that is everything uh in fact let's let's just uh yeah let's add in add media source i'm gonna play you one of the uh the masters from the mishvald sessions and see what you think because we we went back and i i listened to them and they sounded good but good isn't enough and then we listened again and i changed the balance of the master a little bit not greatly and it really really sounded fantastic the drink off fast facial drooping hmm there we go. Uh, right, I'll listen to this, see what you think. Du gibst mir in den ganzen Klausen Alle Wahnsinn juckt mich nicht Wenn ich bei dir bin, du siehst mich So wie ich gerne wär Scheiß auf die Kilometer, ich komm immer wieder her
küsst mich, so wie ich gerne wär. Scheiß auf den Kilometer, ich komm immer wieder her. Yeah, I thought it sounded pretty good. I hope you enjoyed it. Wow, for some reason the uh, the meters on the visualizer went absolutely crazy for a second there. That was uh, kind of weird. But yeah, um, that was all mixed and uh, mastered using uh, the Slate VSX headphones. <clears throat> the mastering was using uh, the bit that I did off stream afterwards. I used Green Day's American Idiot as a reference <clears throat> and realized that I did what I always do with the mix, which was make it really a bit too bright on the ultra top end. It's just a preference I've always had. I don't know why. Um, so what we did there is using that, we used the ozone match frequencies to basically do the same as a pull tech that uh, softens the top end, <clears throat> which brought it down without muffling it into a nice even range. Um, if anything, um, I didn't use any extra compression of any kind, really, in the mastering stage. And we used the Flatline um, <clears throat> Limiter, the new one from Submission Audio, and it's really good. Really, really good. So I think I'll be buying it. Although I will send a cheeky email out to uh, to Ermin Hamidovic and see if I can <laughs> do a review of it. But if not, yeah. I'm really happy with that mix. And there are seven songs in that vein that are all now completed. And so, yeah, uh, Mischfelder said, that's really good. Can we add more songs? <laughs> so I was like, yeah, sure, of course. So I now just have to wait on them for those songs to be tracked for me to do the next mixing streams. Uh, yeah, the Better, Better Maker EQ is is actually what I used, Benj, on, on the mix... Yeah, on the mix, uh, the master out, quote unquote, on the mix, I did use the Better Maker EQ. Didn't use it much, very, very subtle, but it did a few things that I liked to that mix. And then I was using the Shadow Hills uh, Class A mastering compressor on the mix, but again, very gently. Yeah, I'm really happy with that mix, actually. That came out really well. Um... But yeah, the better the source material is, the better the output can be as well. So credit to Mischfeld for making a big rocking track there. I could spend all night playing you the other six songs, but this isn't a listen back. Um, you know, this isn't a listen with us uh, podcast. So yeah, I'll not do that. But what I might do actually is if they do send me more songs, I might do the end of the last stream as a kind of a listen through of what we have because why not proud of it but yeah i don't want to take over the podcast and doing that but yeah i'm glad you all enjoyed that because i certainly did but yes now is the time to say goodbye and see you all next week and we'll hopefully have had many more videos released by then uh we'll definitely have one out tomorrow a lovely unboxing video and yeah, any other bands come knocking yet? I've had a couple of emails, but honestly, nothing that I've wanted to pick up as a project yet, which is a strange thing to say, but it's actually a quite a liberating thing to be able to say, uh, because yeah, being in the position I'm in doing this YouTube thing, I don't have to say yes to every job and it's really nice. But when something good co does come along, I very much can. So yes, that's a good place to leave it. And I'll see you all next week. Uh, have a look at the updated Patreon ending here and I'll see you all very soon. See you in a bit. Hey everyone, that might be the end of the video, but if you fancy carrying on this conversation, we have a Discord server. Link is in the description. We're also on Patreon, which is something you can really help us with. We also are on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Hot Pole Studios. See you there.